So good afternoon and uh, welcome to this session. Uh, it's going to be about deploying smart building technologies to enable the office of the future. So quite a broad range of topics we need to address. My name is Hugues Depra. I'm the local CTO for Cisco, Belgium and Luxembourg. In fact, when we are talking about new offices, new building, we talk about new experience for the end users. And you all know that this experience has been changed the last years when we were going through the COVID experience. We know that the new normal is hybrid work. And that hybrid work has truly redefined the way we expect to work, but also how the places we're gonna use to work will have to cope with our aspirations. And this is a perfect linchpin to cope with two corporate objectives that many organizations and institutions have, which are the workplace experience and at the same time, sustainability. How can we make sure that we gather these elements in order to find the right balance equations to move forward? And you know that many organizations have been thinking about the real estate. How should we use our offices that have been during almost two years empty? Should we stay with the same number of square meters, offering exactly the same services? Or should we think about doing something? And the equation we see in, in, in the industry, but also what Cisco is applying to itself, is that we will go for fewer offices less square meters, but at the same time, we will invest what we are sparing to increase the experience in the building, to provide way more services that uh, employees, customers, visitors are expecting. So that at the end, we will run at the same cost, but provide other services. And this is very important to think about that equation because for example, at Cisco, we have seen that 40% of our offices were not used anymore. So that spaces we can get rid of, but also rethink the rest. We have been able to take that decision because we knew that 40% of our offices were not used. So having the right data about your real estate, is critical to take any decisions because here we are at the crossroad of technology, real estate, and human resources which is exactly my point. We are here at the crossroad or the intersection between people, space, and technology. And this is basically the equations we will try to solve together by looking at these different elements. And just to give you an idea, when you think about your offices and the offices of the future, you need to think about the intent what do you want to get out of these square meters and what kind of services do we want to provide? In our case, we were thinking about different elements, like, for example, hybrid agile space experience. How can we provide the flexibility that users are looking for? At the same time, to make sure that everything we do is done according to our sustainability principle but also looking at the health and wellness of the employees, making sure that they have what they are looking for and they have pleasure to work in the environment. And last but not least, it's an opportunity to digitalize as well the real estate. And you know, you cannot do that very often because the cycle of real estate is pretty long. This is an opportunity to do it and to do it smart. And I would take, you know, a, a quote from our CEO that was talking about the office. The office should be basically a magnet and not a mandate. So we cannot force the employee to go to the office because they have to. We want to see them. We want to control them. No, at the opposite, they should by themselves go to the office because they have services, capabilities that they cannot get elsewhere, including at home. So we need to rethink what an office should provide to the users. 
And basically, we have seen that employees are coming back to the office if they are able to get four things. First of all, collaborate. They should be able to collaborate with their colleagues. So having the possibility to truly exchange, truly do co-creation. And that's something you can easily do by being in a room, sharing the space, going on a whiteboard and thinking together. At the same time, also learning formally in a classroom or informally, because you will have the opportunity to bump into a colleagues, discuss, sit down and exchange experiences. At the same time, some people are going to the office to concentrate and have a quiet environment. Not everybody has a very big space at home where they can concentrate because yes, we have kids, we have animals, we have neighbors, there is life outside and it's not always easy to have that place. At the office, you can get it. And last but not least, to socialize, to see people, to share a coffee, to have a lunch with uh, someone. I'm used to that quote, never eat alone. You will always learn something if you are able to sit down with colleagues and exchange. And if you want to be able to do that equation, to find the answer for your organization, you need to know what's happening with your square meters and your users. So you need to have an idea of what's going on. So having real-time data is really critical, but also having a layer to analyze this data and be able to use in conversation with HR, for example, or with workplace resources or your real estate colleagues so that you can take the right decision about how to affect the square meters. And this is something that would also evolve year after years. It's not because you take a decision now that it will stay the same for 20 years. So be uh, open for that. Now, I promise to talk about basically the smart building. And I need to tell you what are the characteristics that you need to consider in order to go into what we call smart buildings. First of all, it needs to be converged. So we see that the infrastructure and basically all the different networks you have in a building will go step by step into one and single network. We have seen it for data, voice and video. We see it coming because sensors are coming, because power is coming. And you know that in a building, you have plenty of different networks. The one controlling the ventilation, the one controlling the lift, the one controlling the access control, and so on and so on. Well, I can tell you that the technology is ready to make that convergence. So it's a matter of time, but this is something you need to think about now. The second element that nobody can basically go around, but needs to integrate is sustainability. Most of organizations have been already setting net zero goals. You need to run differently and efficiently. If you need to do that, you need to include the real estate because it's a huge part of your CO2 emissions. And last but not least, if we have these smart buildings, it's to provide an experience, services to end users. So we need to think basically how the workspace will be used and what it will provide. So that's the future of workspace. And if you have to think about the workplace, depending on your role, you will have different ways to look at it. And these are some of the use cases that you can find into a smart building and smart workplaces. Of course, you start with the user. The user needs to have a comfortable environment where he will find the environment to concentrate, to make some video calls, to be able really to have what he's looking for. At the same time, some of your colleagues will look at the real estate as a safe place. Do we have the right density of people? Is the quality of the air correct? What about the noise quality? Some other people will look at how to make sure that all the people visiting the building will get the right experience, that we are maximizing the use of these square meters. And, and you can go towards the real estate people looking at how they should operate the building in a very efficient way. For example, if there is nobody in a room, why should you let the lighting on or warm that room? 
It sounds evident, but when you have to do that at scale, looking after automation is an important element to take into consideration. And so I would like to remind you that what I'm talking about is basically touching the digital transformation team that we are currently busy with. I already mentioned that uh, more than a decade ago, we were looking at integrating voice and data. Everybody is used to take this kind of headset and have a call. That's the new normal. COVID helped to get video adoption. It's normal to do a video call. But the next things to happen is to integrate all the sensors that are more and more embedded into the equipment around you. Do you know, for example, in the access points, you have already sensors to measure a lot of things like the quality, the sound, the quality of the air, the sounds. The same for the video equipment where we can count the number of people in a room and so on and so on. And last but not least, which is a true game changer, power is coming into the equation. So the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure will be able to distribute power in real estate, in buildings, making it way more efficient. And that's something we should take into consideration early because when a building is already up and there is already cabling, it's too late to have that impact. So basically we have an approach that is two prong. So basically two tracks to take. The first one is to move to DC power. Distribute DC power across the building. And the second one is to allow that IT, OT convergence also into the building space. This is something that we see already in manufacturing, but that's an opportunity to make it happen also in buildings. These two elements are super important. And the first one I want to tackle is about the energy. Because if we are looking at the greenhouse gas emission, 20% of the energy-related greenhouse gas emissions are coming from building. So it's a huge spot where we can have an impact if we can improve the efficiency. And what we see is that in a building, operated as today, we can waste up to 20% of the energy just by doing conversion between AC and DC. Let me take an example. From the grid, we all get AC power. We take that power and we distribute it across the building to the different tools and elements we have. Lightning, the beamer, the access control, a printer. And you all know that all of these devices has a little electrical transformer. These transformers are not optimal and can waste up to 20% of the used power, so, which is really huge. If we move to a technology like power of the Ethernet, distributing DC power across the building, we could reduce those waste and inefficiencies up to 45%, which is then having a very big impact on the sustainability aspect. And why am I talking to you about that now and not really 10 years ago? Because technology evolved. Think about two things that happened at the same time. Think about lightning. If you had a bulb asking for 100 watts to produce lights, to produce the same quantity of lumens, we can use a LED using 17 watts. So it's one sixth of the power we had to use before. At the same time, power over Ethernet, which is a standard, has been evolving to a point where we can get beyond a port of a switch up to 90 watt of power, which is really big. We can do a lot of things with that. And I want you to remember one thing out of this conference is that IT and IT convergence is the fourth utility after water, gas, and electricity that you need to have in a house. Your architect will take that as a default. He should take as well the IT infrastructure. That's a way to make a real change, not only on sustainability, but also on the end user experience. Because if we look at the opportunity, 
we have now the possibility on a port to give up to 90 watts. So it's not just a phone, it's not just an access point. It can be lightning, can be ventilations, and even a big screen that will be powered by the data cable that you have already in many buildings. You don't need an electricity cabling system just to give the same power. And that's a system that you will be easily controlling because you control the port, you can lower the, po the power, you can switch it off, you can automate that to create that impact. And like I told you, there will be convergence in the buildings between the different networks that are there. It's a matter of time. Technology is there and the ecosystem What happens? Yeah. Is it back? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Moving forward, so you can couple on that network all the system, thank you, managing the infrastructure, access control, HVAC, so that at the end, you have all the elements to have a smart building, to provide the right experience, touching the different points I was mentioning, the worst space experience, healthy, security, automations of the building. And that's something that we are doing in our office. So this is the DGAM office of Cisco, where we can see how we are operating the different rooms. I see which rooms are busy or not. I see the temperature, the humidity, the noise. So if I'm looking for a space, I go in front of a big screen. I see that there is a room that is available. I click on it and I have five minutes to go to that room to confirm that I'm there and everything will be set up for me. Lightning, warming, and I can use it as a normal, uh, as a normal person and uh, employee. So the equation is pretty simple. You use like, for example, catalyst switching and wireless equipment using PoE. You have that data collective uh, layer called Cisco Spaces, and you are able to start your first element of the smart building. Of course, Cisco is able to provide you several building blocks, the green ones on the screen. We cannot do everything alone. So we are working with an ecosystem where different partners, having integrated their solutions, will guarantee you that it can work on a Cisco infrastructure so that we can cover the different, uh, the different use cases that you intend to provide in your buildings. So as a kind of summary, we are basically trying to find so the equilibrium elements between HR policies, how people will work, between technology, the smart buildings, and also the experience, the hybrid work strategy. And the network is there not to deliver just connectivity, but to provide that experience, that control point that we are looking for. And I would like to show you what it is when you have the new type of video equipment into a meeting room to have what we call cinematic meetings. I hope you get the sound. Camera right there. 
Nope. Nope. Let's, uh, let's put it up there. And can we get intelligent audio so that everyone in the room can be heard? What about framing? So these side conversations don't get lost in the noise. Agreed. Amazing. And maybe it could all be directed like a movie in real time so that everyone on the call feels like they're in the room and part of the conversation. It would be amazing if I could stand and move around the room while I talk. I could go through our latest pitch or market forecast and nothing would be missed. Not even if I spin dramatically and look right there. So you have seen what kind of basically meeting experience we can get if you have the right equipment in the room. AI will allow the people to basically work naturally, getting up, speaking, wherever they want. They will be followed, providing the same experience in the room and outside the room. Just to finish, I want to share with you some experience we did by retrofitting our office in New York, in the Pen One office, we were looking at covering different points I've already mentioned, the workplace experience, making sure that we were sustainable, looking at the best advantages for our employees, and to share with you what we have been able to achieve. Well, first of all, we really changed the setup from a majority of me space to a majority of we space, spaces where I can meet colleagues and collaborate. From 30% uh, collaborative space to 70%. We have been able to achieve sustainability elements. We put POE everywhere. We have been able to get the right air quality. Also sparing on the materials we were using because we are using less cabling into the building. And just in terms of power consumption, we have been able to make the comparisons before and after COVID, same period of time, same number of people. And you can see that we have been able to get 20% in the first period and 47% power reduction by retrofitting the environment and taking benefits of the new technologies. Just as few examples, you know, you get a cable to power a desk, you know, this desk where you can have a motor to an engine to get it at the ace that you want. You just need one cable to do that. And even with a USB splitter, you have other ports for your laptops, for your phones, for a light, which is giving freedom for the employees to configure basically the room as they want without having to look for uh, electrical uh, plugs. The recipe for that has been to use several Cisco equipment from collaborative equipment using WebEx, but also so wireless equipment, power over, uh, power over Ethernet equipment, and then, like I said, third-party equipment, sensors to measure the quality of the air, to measure basically the number of people we were having. And the most important element is that we are always able to get a view of what's going on because we are collecting a lot of data points and being able to analyze them and through AI to make this data understandable for the different colleagues. If you don't want to fly to New York and you pass by Atlanta, be welcome. But if you want, we can take the train, being sustainable, and go to Paris, which is our first uh, so sustainable smart office in Europe. I've been there. This is really fantastic. And to conclude, I would like to let you know that thinking about real estate buildings, smart buildings, is not a one-off. It's a loop. So starting with the strategy and the outcomes you want to get of that investment, you will be able to make choices, make the deployment against true data analytics, understand if everything that you've thought about has, has been using, has been used the right way, and then being able to program or reprogram your real estate, affecting rooms or flows to different entities, different usage, and be able to do that loop. So as a key takeaways, first is to really to embrace that smart building alert loop. Second is to think about a strategy which is starting with the desired outcome. Focus on your end user, what they should experience. Then you will be thinking about the technology as the fourth utility after gas, electricity and water. Think about investing in POE plus equipment so that you will be able to power your building, avoiding inefficiency of traditional AC systems. And then 
And repeating what I said, you can't manage what you can't measure. So having data collections and a way to analyze the data is critical. And then I invite you to start your occupancy journey now together with the different colleagues from HR, real estate, because it's by working in group by three that you will be able to crack that very interesting equations. Thank you very much for your attention. Proximus next. Think possible.